Shalom Aleikum. Brothers and sisters, how are you? This is Minister Uriah Baraka coming at you again with part four of Preparation for Exodus. We feel that these studies are necessary. There's mis much misdirection in the movement and we're coming for the purpose of empowering you in understanding the deeper sense and a more revolutionary perspective of the word. Um, we have learned that Moshe, having come to Achar Hanidba, the end of the wilderness, or the after experience of the wilderness, that is the condition of affliction for the purpose of purification. We call it vastation. When this process uh, was complete, we see that Moses saw a clearer vision of Elohim, as Yeshua teaches, blessed are the pure at heart, for they shall see Elohim. So we understand that the reason Moses saw this new and higher vision of Yahuwah, Elohim, is because of his Midbar experience. The experience of tackling the afflictions of the heart, the temptations of the heart, and bringing him to a state of, of death. Thus, a state of purity. When darkness is gone, then light is born. And in this light of purity, Moshe saw a clearer vision, a greater vision of Elohim. And when this new vision arose in Moses, he made a declaration in Shemut 3.3. Ve yomara Moshe et sorana, sorana, ve et brea, et ha mare, hagedol haze, madua lo yebara, hashena. This is translated, and this is my translation based upon my understanding of the words. And Moshe said, I will reject, abolish, and disattach now. And I will see this great vision, this revelation of sight, sight relating to the understanding. Why or what is the meaning that the bush, the, the bush does not burn? The word turn, I had supposed, was shoe. I was wrong. Instead, as I read it in the Hebrew, I saw that the stem of this expression was Sora, Samik, Vaor, Varesh, rather. <laughs> I'm sorry. Samik, Varesh, with the pre prefix attachment, Alif Segol, which means I shall or I will. The stem word Sora means to reject, disattach from, abolish. Thus, Yoma Moshe. Esore Sorana means emphatic translation, and Moses said, I shall reject, abolish, and disattach. Now, now, the et harea, and I will see. That is, I will come to understand. So we have the word madua means, what is the meaning of this? I need to see and to understand the meaning of this. Why the bush does not burn. This is important to understand that Moses understood that for him to clearly understand the greater revelation, which now appeared to him, he had to disattach from the previous Midbar experience. He had to disattach even from the knowledge that got him there, from everything. He had to abolish it, sort of, to abolish, to disattach. To reject this knowledge which was given to him through Yitro by Elohim to get him to through the Achar Hamidba, the end of the wilderness, the after experience of vastation. Moses, as we should also understand that in order to embrace a new and higher vision of Yahuwah, his will and purpose, we must abolish, reject all things of the prior experiences that we have gone through. We can't hold on to anything. As the Apostle Saul said, uh, 
putting those things behind. Let us move forward to attain the higher mark of the calling of Yeshua. Moses recognized this, that in order for me to embrace this new vision, I have to let go, reject, and abolish of all things in the past. This is something that we need to understand, that we cannot hold on and dogmatize or cover our enslavement with religion. We have to reject the enslavement and move on to freedom, move on to a clearer view of his will and purpose. See, you're not just giving a complete revelation simply because you call yourself Hebrew. No, that's just the beginning. Once you call yourself Hebrew, that is, one who has the will and the purpose to cross over from the life of the flesh to the spirit, then you must pursue that course. It is progressive. There's a preparation that needs to be done first before you go whacking off scriptures. Before you go pretending to be a teacher when you need to be a student. See, you have to be prepared. And that preparation is in the meat bar. In the place of affliction. Where you must conquer through the obedience of truth. Obedience unto death. To all the characteristics of darkness that is innately in the human nature. You see, we cannot move forward until the faith of Yeshua, until we have completely let go of the dead faith of Babylon. We cannot move into the power of divine culture until we have fully abolished all influences of human secular culture that is founded in supremacist culture, culture of the flesh. We cannot embrace tranquility, peace, until we have rejected the attitudes that produces those, uh, those things that causes us to negate our fellow man, to minimize our brothers, their gifts and their callings and Yahweh, and all us obsessive competitive urges that produces nothing but strife, contention and antagonism. It stems from a condition of ontological hatred. We must, as Moshe say, eh, sorah, nah, I must reject now. I must understand that I cannot move into the greater religion clothed in filthy garments, producing those characteristics that is opposite of the divine nature. I must conform myself to congeniality with the divine nature. I must put away the afflictions. I must put away the hatreds. I must put away the temptations. I must put away the false ideology of Babylon built upon a race doctrine that has brought nothing forth but a negation of man and an avalanche of murder. We do this so that we can see the greater revelation. We must understand and we must see clearly that Yahweh responded to Moshe after this declaration. This is, this is fully shown here that it is because only then after he had made this declaration and acted upon this declaration, that Yahweh, Yahuwah, rather, guided him towards the greater light. As the scripture says in Shemut 3, 4, when Yahuwah saw, and after Yahuwah saw, the Hebrew word is key, which is causative, meaning because. When Yahweh saw, because Moses saw it, Rejected, abolished, disattached, to see, to understand, to inquire into, to come closer to. He called out to Moshe. He called out to Moshe. He made his intentions known to Moshe. He guided Moshe into this greater light and gave Moshe instructions of Exodus. 
see, this is why the bush was not burnt. Hashene, the bush, the thorny bush. Because Yahuwah did not come to condemn the thorniness of our mind, but to redeem it. He didn't come to consume it in judgment, but to redeem it. So this shows that in Yahweh's appearing, there was within this appearing a redemptive purpose. I came not to condemn man, but to save man. And if Mashiach had this purpose while in the flesh, now that he is in spirit and this spirit dwells within you, that same purpose dwells within you because the purpose was derived from the spirit that was in him, which was the spirit of the father. This must be perfectly understood. That if you say that you are Messianic, that you are Hebrew, that you worship Yahuwah, then the same purpose that exists in him will exist in you. If it says Elohim is love, then you know to conquer the afflictions of hatred within your heart and pursue love. You will never know what love is until first you conquer the afflictions in the meat bar experience that you must go through. Yahweh reacted to Moses based upon his reaction to the first glimmer of the vision. And Yahweh brought him into a higher and newer experience of the divine will and purpose based upon his reaction. It sorah na, I shall reject and abolish all things that came prior to this vision. Thus, a greater vision of enlightenment, a greater, through this greater vision of enlightenment, there was a greater responsibility a greater position and a greater power bestowed upon him, a power which was appropriated unto the complete disempowerment of Mishraim. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. I would say Moses performed very well since Mishraim did fall or was disempowered to the degree that exit does could be completed. It must be clearly understand that most people of religion have no power, that is, no power that is related to Yahuwah, because they are unwilling to abolish kinship with the culture of the flesh. It's profitable. The glory of the flesh, that's what Shaitan offered to Yeshua. I will give you all the glories of the world if you bow down to me because they have been given to me. If you worship me, if you serve me, Satan, deception, lies, delusions, and falsehoods, now I'll give you all the glories of the flesh. Just because a minister is rich doesn't mean that richness came from Yahweh. Because he has a mega church it doesn't mean that Church came from Yahweh, since in most cases they sell out to the love of money. They are unwilling to reject the flesh culture. And for most, they maintain a spiritual position of comfort, which they strongly desire to hold on to, opposed through passing through the afflictions of the meat bar in order to attain the greater vision of Yahweh's will and purpose. Such as these in the word are called fearful, that is, cowards. Cowards. They stand at the borderline of the mead bar and they see the heat, the scorpions, the serpents that's in the desert. They're not trying to go through there. They have no faith that, as Yahshua said, you shall thread over serpents and scorpions. <laughs> They just have a religion that gives them an appeasement with the system. They serve what the system says serve. Their parent is the system. That's why you see many who say they have this great faith in Yahuwah, yet their substance comes from the loyalty to the system. And anything opposed to that system, they 
ultimately reject and persecute. These are the members of the dragon. So we must understand that if we're going to hold the title of Hebrew, then we must emulate the prophet, Moshe. We must go through all the stages of rejection that leads to conjunction, that leads to instruction, that takes us through the meat bar, and then to reject all things prior when the new vision arrives, understanding that the supreme vision of his will and purpose, that is, the vision of Exodus, the redemptive purpose that he has committed to us as ministers of reconciliation. Those who use the Hebrew movement as a means to appropriate hateful thoughts and ideals, you're not Hebrew. Those who are competitive and want to show people how many scriptures they can quote within a 10 second range, you're not Hebrew. You just have clothed yourself with a religion over your enslavement, you see, because freedom is defined in terms of love, mercy, patience, peaceful knowledge. And the peaceful acquisition as well as the distribution of that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding for one purpose, the exodus of the people the redemption of the people from the darkness of this world. I'll stop here. And I hope I was clear on all points. Forgive me if I wasn't. And if I said any of the Hebrew raw words not properly, forgive me. I know the criticism that comes over small points, even though big points have been made. But let us move on to the high mark of the calling of Mashiach, that we might fulfill the righteousness of Elohim of the earth and become kings and priests, priests who shall rule over the earth through the power of Yahuwah Elohim. Brothers and sisters, Shalom Alekim.